would do. That's okay. No, I don't. Okay. It's not a be live. Okay, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. And I'm getting OBS starting. OBS starting. OBS starting. OBS starting. Should I silence the phone so it's not picked up? Yep. Okay, we're live. We are live. Hey, everybody, welcome to Ezekiel's Wheel. This is Melissa Hood and Don Flores, and we are doing a redo because of everything being a disaster Friday night because of spiritual warfare. And we're still getting it. We're still getting warfare, but we don't care. We don't care. We're going to press through it. And we're going to go, and, and uh, Dawn is on here right now. Um, so she's actually, Dawn is, it's it's freezing up whenever I hit mute. So we're trying to keep the enemy from hitting our audio and everything, but we're going to keep going as long as we can. And we're going to have a successful program. That's what we're going to do tonight. And so um, we're just here to redo it. We've got some a great show for you Uh and we've added on to it from Friday. And so we're not really so much concerned with the live audience as much as we are the replay and making sure people get the word of God. And so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your patience as we develop the show. And uh, we just thank you. We thank you and uh, hope you enjoy the show today. Don, uh, why don't you take it up with um, declarations and we'll hit it off from there. Okay, great. Thank you, Missy. Uh, this has been such a wonderful week with the with um, with a prophetic um, activity that's been going on the uh, the embassy opening on Monday. I know that it's it's as though a, a line has been drawn in the sand and and that the enemy is not wanting that. Um, of course, to take place. And it's uh, great news also that many other countries are following and moving their embassies to Jerusalem. So we're really excited yeah. about that. Um, there are many uh, shifts and shifting that are continuing and becoming prominent. Uh, the Lord's letting us know that numbers of individuals, that the number of individuals that join us are not the important thing. He is singling those out that are like-minded and focused. And it's not that the other individuals are not uh, following the Lord, but it is that um, he has a different job for them to do. And so this is, uh, we need to just focus on ourselves and our walk with the Lord. That's the important part. And, um, okay, keep one another in prayer. Stay connected. Let your spiritual family know when you need prayer. We are not in this battle alone. So that's a really important thing. It's a body. We're working together and we're supporting one another. Um, this recap is taken from declarations posted daily on my blog site, which is donflores.blog. The following declarations are for the period of Saturday, May 12th through Friday, May 18th. I write these declarations in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, and in his authority and through his power. The angelic troops stand ready to dispatch these decrees to the heavenly realm to the rulers and authorities, and to post in the king's palace. Revelations 2 and 3 and Ephesians 3, 10. Esther 8, verses 10 and 13. From Saturday, May 12th, God ordained my steps. His glory fills me and overflows. I decree and declare God's wisdom is for those who are mature enough for it. It is not the wisdom of the world or of the world's leaders who are in the process of passing away. On the contrary, we are communicating God's secret wisdom, which was hidden until the revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, which God decreed 
would bring us glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. I decree and declare the Lord is calling you. Come to me and remain in my presence. His presence is with you who have Christ Messiah as Savior. The Comforter dwells with you forever. Remaining in God's presence is a conscious effort and a loving habit of acknowledging him in all that you do. Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. From Sunday, the Lord raises up truth and exposes hidden secrets. Truth will reign in the land. I decree and declare, heavens above rain down justice. The clouds pour it down, the earth opens so that salvation springs up and justice sprouts with it. The Lord God Almighty has created it. Isaiah 45, verses 1 through 8. I decree and declare President Trump is protected and lifted up above those who surround him. People breathing fire, men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongues sharpen swords. The Lord God is exalted above heaven. His glory will be seen over all the earth. Psalm 57, verses 1 through 11. From Monday the 14th, God's timing is perfect. Trust in, turn to, and thank him. I decree and declare with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some think of slowness. On the contrary, he is patient with you. For it is not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed, but that everyone should turn from his sins. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 18. I decree and declare we have received the Spirit of God so that we can understand the things he has so freely given us. This is why we avoid speaking as the world does with human wisdom, but instead we speak as we have been taught by the Spirit, by which we explain things of the Spirit to people who have the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 16. From Tuesday the 15th, you have been given keys to the kingdom. Before you are doors that no man can shut. I decree and declare Christ Jesus, Messiah Yeshua, who has the key of David, who, if he opens something, no one else can shut it, and if he closes something, no one else can open it. The Holy One knows what you are doing. He has put it in front, he has put in front of you an open door, and no one can shut it. Revelation chapter 3. Verses 7 through 13. I decree and declare, Lord, you are my God. I seek you eagerly. My heart thirsts for you. My body longs for you in the land parched and exhausted where no water can be found. I have contemplated you, Lord, in the sanctuary seeing your power and glory, for your grace is better than life. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. From Wednesday, uh, um, you are radiating God's strength, revelation, and discernment. I decree and declare you are blessed. The Lord brings you near into his courtyards, you are satisfied with the goodness of his house, the holy place of his temple. He answers you with awesome deeds. He is the God of our salvation in whom we all put our trust. Psalm 65, verses 5 through 9. I decree and declare, I love you, Lord, my strength. 
You are my rock, my fortress, and deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I find shelter. My shield, the power that saves me. My stronghold, Psalm 18, verse 1 through 6. From Thursday, God's servants walk in purity, justice, and integrity. I decree and declare the Lord God repays you for your uprightness, according to your purity in his view. With a merciful, he is merciful. With a champion of purity, he is pure. Second Samuel 22, verses 22 to 26. Uh, let's see, excuse me. Um, I decree and declare that our lives are a book read by the world. We commend ourselves by our purity, knowledge, patience, and kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by genuineness of love and truthfulness of speech, and by God's power. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. From Friday, May 18th, Jerusalem is receiving a spirit of grace and prayer. From God's throne. I decree and declare the leaders of Judah will say, Those living in Jerusalem are my strength. Through the Lord God Almighty, in that day God will make the leaders of Judah like a blazing fire, like a fiery torch among the sheaves of grain. They will devour all the surrounding peoples on the right and on the left. Jerusalem is inhabited in her own place, Jerusalem. I decree and declare the Lord God Almighty on that day will seek to destroy all nations attacking Jerusalem, and he will pour out on the house of David and those living in Jerusalem a spirit of grace and prayer. They will look to him who, whom they pierced, they will mourn for him as one mourns for the only son. The eyes of the people of Israel are becoming opened to know and experience their Messiah, Yeshua, Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. This week, remember to keep your eyes on the Lord and what he is doing with Israel the land of Israel, and his calendar. The Hebrew feasts is, are our clock for the days we are in. Cover your city, state, country, and world in prayer. In the name of King Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, empowered and led of the Holy Spirit of God, we dispatch the angels throughout the land and the spirit realm to deliver these decrees to all, both flesh and spirit. The enemy, the principalities and powers have no authority to act against these decrees of our King, Lord God Almighty. Their actions will be of no effect to God's chosen ones, but will be turned back on themselves for destruction. Father, according to Job 22, verses 28 to 30, you said, if I decree a thing, it will be established. And so, Lord, I decree over all these people here and myself, these key points, according to the scriptures given in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah's name. Amen. Okay, hey. Missy. Back hey, to you. Girl. Awesome. Can you hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes. Awesome, man. <laughs> what a change from Friday, huh? Oh, uh, I had to actually move my cell phone away from me because of the reverb. And so when I did that, it's still on, but it, it cuts down the reverb. So I just kind of That's moved good. it across the desk. But um, there's something about that with the app. I don't know what that is. We'll call and deal with it later. Um, I just wanted to really, really talk to people tonight or today actually about when people make us feel um, 
rejected it or make us feel uh, like we're less than and not really um, part of the program or making us feel like an outsider for no reason. Uh oh, there it is. Making us feel like an outsider for no reason, uh, which causes discouragement um, and really, really makes it makes a lot of the body right now tired of being pursued by the enemy. And so when we're discouraged, the Lord's saying we shouldn't make any impulsive decisions while under duress. Don't make any impulsive speech. Don't make any impulsive comments, things like that. And so that it's because when people continue to pursue us, although we've done nothing wrong, it's because we're moving deeper into Christ. And so God really wants us to help us to understand what's been going on all these years with that particular thing, because I really, really sense that a lot of people have been um, wounded um, on, hold on one second, let me tell her I've muted her uh, because it was just too bad. Can you hear me, Don? Um, I cut down the reverb so I wouldn't have that distraction. Um, so anyway, um, a lot of people have been disgusted by that. Cut down, hold on one second, down on the reverb so I wouldn't be distracted. Muted you. So anyway, so the Lord basically is trying to get us to the place where we're moving forward despite how our past circumstances have made us feel because a lot of people are coming out of um, injustices and we're coming out of the different healings, and I've talked about that a million times with people. But we weren't the only ones. The Lord wants us to know that we weren't the only ones that – um, have gone through this because David went through this. He went through this with Saul. And I've been talking to you guys even on Friday night as to whether you're going to war through a spirit of David or whether you were going to war through a spirit of Saul. And if you remember on Friday night, I was talking to you guys about Saul and David when they were in the same room. Saul threw his spear at David and it was the last thing that left his hand. He had no other weapons. Whereas David was playing a harp, worshiping the Lord, drawing the spirit near him to where the Lord then began to fight through him because of him being a worshiping warrior and learning to stay in worship and praise so that he continually had a weapon. So God became his weapon and God will become our weapon when we're believing for the hard things, whether it's provision or housing or food or a job or destiny or whatever, because when we're worshiping warriors, the spirit of the Lord, I'm feeling the spirit right now draw near me. He draws near to our vessel. So his faith enmeshes with our own. And we believe, we begin to believe through him. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, who strengthens our faith, who strengthens our believing, who strengthens our ability to have faith, who strengthens our ability to have belief. So we actually tap in to the power that's on God within us, which is what he always meant for us to do, which is why he wants us to stay in praise and high praise. But when we're constantly being pursued by the spirit of Saul, it can wear us down as warriors. And so that's what happened to David because Saul was continually chasing David for no other reason than his jealousy of him. And David couldn't help that God had called him to be king. A lot of you can't help that God has called you where you've been called, and it's non-negotiable. The gifts of God are irrevocable. So we can't give them back, if you will. So all we have, the only option we have is to come forward into the gift and into the calling, lest we be disqualified. Many are called, but few are chosen. And so that's where we're at right now. And so Saul thought that if he could kill David, that that would nullify the calling. And God said, nope. Doesn't work. Doesn't work like that. Things of the kingdom don't work like that. Because not only did God protect David, he allowed Saul to destroy himself, as are some of your enemies fixing to start happening around them. And, and I hate to sound so negative to say that, but it's it's just kingdom. It's kingdom. And people don't understand that if, if they don't change and they don't allow themselves to be changed, they start moving against the Lord on our lives or on leaders' lives, and they're kicking against the pricks. And so it's like Saul was, or Paul, he turned into Paul, was going down the road and the Lord asked him, why are you kicking against the pricks, Paul, after actually was calling him Saul. But, but so anyway, so they're coming at the Lord on our lives, not us. And so although 
people continually come at us, that still does not give us the right to come back at them. And the reasoning for that is because we want to plant good seeds for our own harvest. We want to make sure that because we live by a season of seed plus time equals harvest, we want to make sure we're always sowing a good harvest. So honestly, I've got to the place where when people act crazy like that, I just stay quiet. I don't engage. I don't do anything. I don't even respond. I just because I just let them reap what they sow because I don't want to sow anything and I don't want to react. I want to respond. And so that's what our main prerogative should be in this hour. So God says, let me deal with your enemies. But, you know, this is a place that we're all at too right now. And I really, really sincerely feel like this. I mean, I don't know about some of you, but I really, really sense by the spirit that so many people pardon me, are so sick and tired of Saul coming at them that they're starting to taunt their enemies right now. And they're taunting Saul, the Sauls in their lives right back because Saul's behaviors were so obnoxious and obvious that he was bullying David. And, and that's not for everybody because not everybody behaves like that. But a lot of people are so tired of it that they're like, nah, 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 nah. and the Lord says, don't gloat over your enemies when I'm starting to take them down. Do not gloat over your enemies. And, 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 and granted, some of us are so sick and tired of the devilish behaviors and the 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 just it's it's just so prevalent. And, and in our minds, we're thinking, don't you know what you're doing? Don't you see what you're doing to yourself, to yourself, not me? My God protects me. So don't you see what you're doing? But they don't because deception is just that powerful and deception will walk a man into an early grave. Think about how many have gone before us that have done that. So this isn't the first time this has ever happened. But David was so aggravated with Saul that he tempted Saul and his men when he caught Saul in the cave. When he was when he cut off a piece of his robe, he was tempting him, basically saying, come on over here and get the spear out of our hand. So that it, and it was that was the point that David was at where he was like, come on over here. He was like he was toying with the idea of. Maybe I want to whoop up on you a little bit to give you a taste of your own medicine to let you know what it feels like to be bullied all the time and to be taunted all the time and to be mocked all the time and to be humiliated all the time. And the Lord says, what you do to the least of these you've done unto me, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And it's a hard thing to walk in love. God knows I need it. <laughs> so, and I'm a, and I'm a truth warrior, so people like me are gonna have a harder time. Instead of mercy warriors, they're they're truth warriors and mercy warriors, and then there are people that wield the the uh, both sides of the sword with mercy and truth on their swords. But there are double truth and double mercy. So the double truth people have to work doubly as hard to stay in love. Mercy, double mercy, they're automatically there. That's why God sends them in after He whacks and prunes back. All this stuff in judgment on these people. And, and that's why judgment is being sent in left and right right now. But then God will send in mercy, double mercy, like the like the balm of Gilead to cover and, and cover the pieces that have been pruned back so severely by the Lord to force fruitfulness, to force change, to force growth in the people around us. And so David was aggravated with Saul. He was taunting him. But the one thing David never did was touch God's anointed. That's the one thing he never did. God says, touch not mine anointed, not through words, acts, or deeds. That's what that means, the word, act, or deed. And we're not to touch them. And sometimes you, you want to touch them. You want to lay hands on them. <laughs> you want to lay hands on them and, and then pray for healing later. That's what you want to do to people. Because even, I'm not just going to say, I'm not going to pick on leaders. But, yeah, even everybody misses it. Everybody misses it. And I mean, we don't always get it right 100 percent of the time because we've never been this way before. And so God is taking us a new way now. And so we need to cut each other some slack is what I'm telling you. And, and that doesn't mean to submit to evil people or to do something that's illegal. Nothing. We all have brains. We know how to use it, hopefully. But the one thing we need to know during these moments of the enemy's pursuit of us is that the higher the anointing or the calling on our vessel, the more of a threat to the devil will become. And so that's why the escalation has come about with people coming at you and left and right. And you're thinking, gosh, I'm so sick of this. I'm just so sick of this. But this means that the more the enemy will use the weaknesses of others around us to try to hinder us from being qualified by the Lord for our high callings. And he'll try to use us to disqualify ourselves. And I don't know about you. 
that's not happening. That's not happening here. I've gone too far to turn back now, but especially through touching God's anointed in an unholy way. It's like touching the Ark of the Covenant, like that guy that was struck dead. He touched the Holy Ark when they were moving it from David's thing. The Lord says, touch not. Don't touch holy things in an unholy way. It's called strange fire. So our enemies might try to even use prophetic gifts on other people, just like they did, just like Saul did. Saul sought out the dead prophet Samuel. And, and, and they these people come in and they, they seek out prophets, even false prophets, to try to manipulate and control because of their refusal to change or be changed because to them it's all about winning. It's not about changing and having a heart change. It's about winning. And when people make it about winning, they're going to win something, and they may get what they want, but they may not like what they get. And so this is where God's like, really, you're going to try to come against the holy God, and you're going to try to have your own way when I've already told you it's my way or hit the highway. And so God is saying in this season, you want to move with the clouds. You don't want to get left behind. You don't want to try to do things your own way. You want to be connected to the right groups, the right tribes, because it's all about who you're connected to, their roots and their fruits. Are they operating in love? God is love. So if they're operating in the spirit of love, that doesn't even mean, and they may even be tough warriors. I know that I come across as a salty warrior, and I make no bones about that. I don't apologize for it. I'm not going to apologize for who I am, nor should you, because we're each beautifully and wonderfully made in God's image. And just we're not the new breed of warriors not going to fit into the mainstream church. Matter of fact, a lot of leaders don't know what to do with the new warriors that God is raising up on the scene right now because we we can't be mind molded. We can't be heart molded. We are already some of us. Most of us have been lifted up for such a time as this, but we've been given the gift of love on our vessels from birth. And the Lord says, some are given the gift of faith. Some are given the gift of joy, but those that are given the gift of love, God is love. That's God's spirit. And the gifts of God are irrevocable. You can't give God back. If you got him, why would you want to? And God can't deny himself. So we're standard bearers in the earth being used by God to show people saying, this is the way walk ye in it. This is God's way, walk ye in it. And yes, love does get angry sometimes. It does get angry, and it'll blow your hair back. He'll blow your hair back if he has to warn us and warn us and warn us over and over again so that it causes alignment. He doesn't want to have to do that with us. And so, uh uh-oh, someone unfriended me over this. Can you imagine that? (laughs) Okay, God bless him. So anyhow. Um, Saul, the bottom line to the truth of the conversation is that people, the Saul's in life make choices. Okay. There are people in the church, there are people out of the church, but they're making choices. And so the Davids, the choices and, and those choices take them down certain pathways, whether you're a David or whether you're a Saul, David knew who he was. David knew he was called to be King. He was he did his time in the backside of a mountain. He he was actually the first shall be last and the last shall be first. He knew that and his brothers knew that God had moved him to the front of the pack to be king. And, and it didn't matter what Saul thought. It didn't doesn't matter what people think about us. It does not matter because there are some people in this hour and they said it again this morning in the service. They said that some of you have made it through your doors. And the enemy came at you like fire. He came at you with distractions. He came at us with everything he had to keep us from getting through that door. And others are still contending to get through. You can't quit because God's making a way where there is no way. And right now is not the time to quit because right when you're about to go through, the enemy's going to send in everything he's got to hinder you from going. Because he knows once you get beyond the door, it's game over and you're in the fullness. You're in the fullness. And so that's what we're moving into. But there are certain pathways that lead to certain outcomes if the person has gotten off God's path. But the Davids in life can't control that. And so the issues that become apparent when people don't pursue destiny is that they've settled for second best and that they themselves have grown to resent it. But it doesn't give them the right to resent us because I've done what I was called to do. And I'm not going to make any apologies for it. I've done what God told me to do, I, I stayed through the fire. I've stayed through the storms, just like many of you have. 
and I make no apologies for it. And believe me, further down the road, these people are going to be thanking you for standing and not quitting and not giving up because God says, again, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But the Lord's been showing me the last three days that coming further down this path, many people behind us, and wait till I get further into this message, you're going to flip out because it'll get into that too. But they're going to be like, huh? And they're already starting to, they're already looking at their lives and they're like, maybe I should get a move on. Maybe I should be doing what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, but they're still succeeding when I thought they were going to be taken out. Maybe I need to rethink things. That's the seeds that God's used you to plant. Okay. So you can't quit and you can't give up right now. This now is not the time to quit or give up, but and you don't want to settle for second best, but it doesn't give anybody the right to mistreat us because we figured out a way to get through the door. The truth be known is that we are all still struggling to figure out how to get through. And it just so happens that the David people asked for the right keys that opened the doors and we stayed we stayed with it. We just stayed with it. So we can't quit or give up because that could cause the door not to be unlocked. And we want the doors unlocked everywhere we're going. We want to make sure we're asking for the right keys and moving with the spirit. But the souls need to learn to go back to God and allow him to restore what the locusts have eaten so that all parties can live together in harmony. They may not become the leader that God meant for them to be, but they will still nonetheless be leaders that can be used in some capacity by God. So God wastes nothing. He wastes nothing. He restores the locust of eaten, guys. So that's why I say to make no apologies for where you've walked. Make no apologies for where God's leading you into and the way he's using you. So delay does not mean God has denied you. If you've taken a different path, by the way, love comforts and weeps with sorrow. And so even though the Saul's are, I mean, I, I really, really believe that Saul was sorrowful. I, I believe that's why he was so enraged by David, because he was so convicted and he knew what he'd given up. He knew that he wasn't obeying God. He knew that he was doing things in his own flesh. And that's the problem with the spirit of religion. Religion will take you places you never meant to go. And so religion can't save you. Only a relationship with Jesus Christ saves us. And so part of being saved, part of knowing the Lord is coming into the deep, deep calls unto deep. And part of swimming in the deep waters doesn't necessarily mean you become more religious or mind molded. It means you get more free. It means you are free to be free to be loved unconditionally, free to to be flawed, free to know your limitations. And you know that you do your best and God does the rest. We're free. We're free. And so that that thinking. And the church today blows their mind, blows a lot of the church leaders' minds because they're like, well, I don't know. You know, you're supposed to be holy. Oh, well, who's to say I'm not holy? Who knows my heart but the living God? Only Jesus knows our hearts. And so we're not to judge another man's faith. The Bible also says that. Don't ever judge another man's faith. You don't know their heart. And so that's we're called to be lovers of God, and we're called to cover one another's weaknesses. God says love covers. And so that's why that's the, the society right now that we live in has gotten so far away from the truth of what love is. And even the church that we have gotten into this molded plastic sense of Christianity and everybody's just dying to be loved. They're like, I am so sick of this. I don't know who I am. They're lacking identity. They don't know how to go, where to go to get it. And so that's what Ezekiel's will is all about. Send us your downtrodden. Send us your quirky birds. Send us everybody that's been rejected by the church. Send them to us. Come on. We don't have a problem with it. We're okay with it. We want it because these types of people are usually the most down to earth people and the most pure hearted people. God said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And so the trick to the trade and getting through your doors is having a pure heart. Send us those warriors by God. My Lord, send me all of them. We'll make a mighty force, a mighty Joel 2-5 army. So that's the people that God's lifting up in this hour. So anyway, love comforts and weeps with those who are sorrowful, even those who miss it. And true love doesn't throw the I told you so in another person's face. It just comforts and loves and tries to point the direction to success if people are willing to listen. But the only person who can truly lead the individual to Jesus is Jesus. He's the only one who can prompt a heart to receive revelation. But, but only the Lord can awaken those who have fallen asleep, Lazarus. Check this out. And just because we're going to church or attending a church doesn't mean we will be awakened to truth. 
You've got to be rightly connected. Is the spirit of truth operating in your church? So when, we're, when we can be awakened with the spirit of religion where we spend our entire life thinking we're doing God's will. And that's another spirit, by the way. It's not the spirit of God. God is love. Religion is cold love. And so we can think we're doing God's will all the while. We're just spinning our wheels and making many, many people around us miserable while living a miserable life ourselves. And because of the dysfunction that we choose to operate in and that we usually create, it's man-made. Religion is man-made. That's why Jesus said the only banners we're supposed to carry are love. God is love. We're not supposed to carry political banners. We're not supposed to carry uh, religious banners, denominational banners, cultural banners, and the list goes on and on. The only banner he's called us to, and that's a hard place to get to, by the way, is to step out of the spirit of religion, step out of all these banners, and just put on love. It's hard because you want to get up in your flesh, and you want to. Some, we sometimes want to whip up on people, and God's like, no, that's not going to fly in this hour. I need you to have some discipline. I need you to stay in the spirit of love. And he's cracking down on a lot of people right now like that in this hour. And so anyhow, the Lazarus are waking up right now. But um, so only the Holy Spirit can truly awaken true love within us. And that is if we are willing to do some heart work and deliver it so that true love can come in. The spirit of God can't dwell where sin is. And so he must remove those things that hinder his spirit from dwelling in our hearts, which he allows to take that he allows to take up residence. I'm sorry about something crazy going on my computer here, but yeah, God can't dwell where sin is. And so what God does and the reason why he wants to purify our vessels, remember blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So God has to come in. And the problem with people is this, as we age, we get to this place and it's harder the older we get. We, we don't want things to change. We don't want people trying to change us. We don't want to be told we have to change, but if you stay moldable and pliable, let me tell you, you're going to be one mean, lean, mean fighting machine by the spirit because that means the more of God can come and flow through you to fight through you at the enemy to where it's you all. Your whole spirit is comprised. Your whole vessel is just pure God. It's just pure God all the time. Twenty four seven. Pardon me to where nothing that the enemy throws at you will, will will be successful change. So when our relatives or family members get angry at, us for, angry at us for serving the Lord at high levels of the spirit because of the spiritual dynamics or the discomfort it creates in our atmospheres within there, that means we have chosen to go on with Jesus and die on the cross like he did, just like Lazarus did. You know when Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb? And this was the coolest take on Lazarus that I've ever heard. Lazarus, He said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, come forth. And so what happened was that the Lord's saying that, um, that Lazarus was coming forth regardless of where the, the road took him. He didn't care where the road took him. He didn't even know Jesus was going to be crucified that day. He was just going where Jesus was taking him. Hello, that's where the body of Christ is at right now. We're just following the Lord down the road. We don't know where it's taking us. We're just trusting our father because he know we know he's a good father. Okay, guys? So... Lazarus followed him, and when he called him out of the tomb, he went on with Jesus in his pathway, uh, but he didn't stay in the cave. The cave is where all the dead things are at, if you notice. The cave is where our past is at. The cave is where our grave clothes are at, all of our weaknesses, but he's calling us out of the cave. So those that believe in Jesus and the gifts are being given eternal life and will never perish. So when people try to make us feel like an outsider for walking ahead with Jesus, because even Jesus waited outside the city after he awoke Lazarus. He didn't go into the city. He waited there because he knew that the people were waiting for him. Um, then they, they wanted to crucify him. He knew that there was danger inside the city. So God's purposefully, my point in telling you this is he's purposefully making us feel. Well, I'm not going to say he's making us feel. The enemy wants us to feel like an outsider. But God is protecting us, but not subjecting us to further trauma and further fragmentation and further dysfunction that can set us back as warriors. He wants us to stand up on the wall. He's trying to teach us to stand in this hour so that we can pick up our weapons and know how to flow in the spirit and fight the enemy. But if they didn't receive Jesus, they're not going to receive us, not even some family or some friends. And it's nothing. I'm not trying to pick on, on these people. Actually, it's, it's just what's going on around us at present. And so we know Who's in our camp? Because the Lord says the spirit bears witness with the spirit 
And so people will recognize the spirit of the Lord on your life and love will bear witness with love. And so, but the loss is what made these people gnash their teeth at Jesus. And they're making, and the enemy is using these people's weakness to gnash their teeth at us to, until they confront the own darknesses of their heart for fear of what crucifixion or resurrection might cause them. That's why they're gnashing their teeth. It's fear. The root of anger is fear. So you need to ask people when they're getting mad at you, hey, man, what are you afraid of? Maybe not that confrontationally, but it's really getting people to get honest with themselves. It's like, what are you so afraid of? What are you so mad about kind of a thing? And it's like, what are you really afraid of? What are you really angry about? And it's not even that they're angry. It's that they're afraid. And so when they see you and they see everything that you've paid and all that you've lost to get where you're at, there's a price to be paid for your, where you're walking. And it's a privilege to serve the Lord like that. I want you guys to know that this isn't some, this isn't for little leaguers. This is for the big leagues that God has you walking in. And so, but the people have seen the power of God, they yet denied it. And they know, they feel like you've been disqualified. And God says they haven't been disqualified. I'm qualifying them. This is part of the qualification test that I want them to see. And I want them to know. But those of you who have chosen to go on with that power have, is it, have entered resurrection power now. Hence, you've also experienced promotion. And there are no excuses for not believing. The Lord says that when, when, they, when the people chose not to go on with Jesus, all the people from the church, that were, they saw Lazarus. They saw him being brought out of the tomb when they knew he was dead. They knew that he was down for the count, so to speak. But they were like, Praise you, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Rabbi. But they weren't willing to go on with him down the road. They weren't willing to move in the signs and the wonders and the miracles. They weren't willing to go deeper into the things of the spirit. And so now those are the people that have literally gone back in to many of your caves. And they're literally trying on your grave clothes. They're trying on They're saying, but remember when you wore this? Remember when, remember, remember when you acted like this? Remember when you were this way or that way? And the Lord is like, irrelevant, irrelevant. They're up here with me right now. Why are you still stuck back there? Why are you even in their cave? No one's there. <laughs> Just like I was resurrected. No one's there. Matter of fact, he wasn't resurrected yet. He was on his way. But yeah, that's what he's saying. Why are they there? Why are they there? And just like this morning, I made a post that said, none of us have a past. We only have the now. And that's per Dr. Clarice Fluid. She brought me to that realization, to that one statement on my life. None of us have a past. We only have the now to live in. So for everybody that's stuck living in our past and they're thinking, oh, they can never change. Oh, they can never do this. And da, da, da. What do you know? What do they know? They don't know me. They don't know you. They don't know my heart. And so I'm not stuck there with them. So sometimes we have to move on without them in order to keep moving on with God. That's what I'm trying to say. So there are no excuses for not believing. And by the way, um, those who have chosen to live in, I already said that, um, they're the ones that, da, 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 um, da, 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 got that. Okay. So, but now God is calling us all out. Thank you, Lord. And that means even the people that were in the tomb, like I talked about before. So now they're reevaluating where they're at because they realize they've stayed stuck at your tomb. They've stayed stuck at a lot of our tombs where they've seen the old self and they've seen the transformation power. They've seen the cost. They've seen the loss. And so, but these people are waking up and realizing that the tomb they've been guarding <coughs> is just that. It's empty. It's empty. And so if it's empty and it's been emptied of everything, there's literally nothing there for them to watch over. And they're sick and tired of waiting on us to return back to the sickness that they've gotten stuck in, that we used to be stuck in. So now these people in and around us are having to reevaluate their hearts and make changes. Although slow, they are having to look inside now. And the Lord says, because God has called all of us to take the gospel to the whole world, whether you're with that group of people or whether you're with the current group that's leading right now. And so all the injustices and the losses of people getting stuck in our past, it's all being used. God uses everything. He uses it all to make everything beautiful. To, he restores. He makes everything beautiful in its own time, but he restores what the locusts have eaten. And plans go wrong for lack of godly advice. And people listen to ungodly advice around us. And that's because they're usually going to false prophets or things like that. 
in trying to manipulate. They're still stuck in fear and manipulation, i.e. Jezebel, i.e. the mother of religion. And it doesn't mean they're in control. It doesn't mean that they're going to trump God's plan for your life. You need to know that. So we can think we're receiving godly advice only to be receiving religion. And so be careful who you're listening to is what I'm saying. And so we also need to be careful not to trust in ourselves or to think that we are going to win over God or, or not even to get in that position where we are, what do you say, you're challenging God. You don't want to challenge God. I don't want to wrestle with God. Jacob wrestled with God and he got his hip broke. I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So we want to let God be in control. We want to trust him with other people. And But the true keys to unlocking doors that take us places are listening correctly and obeying when God tells us to move. And I really, really think that that is the message that God is telling us in this hour, to come out of the old. We're stepping forward into the deep, calling into deep. I mean, we're really deep. We're over our head now. We're way over our head. We've been over our head for a while, not knowing what the future holds, but trusting the goodness of God. And that's the only thing we have to hold on to because we know only God can keep us from a corrupt world. And so with that, I want to probably give it back to Don and, uh, and let Don talk to you about some Q&A. And so, Don, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going into the QAnon news and now comes the pain saying that Corsi isn't explaining QAnon decoding correctly. Again, caution who you listen to. The deep state wants to divide and confuse listeners. Q Trump has said that he is dealing with the Illuminati and will be putting them in jail as well as ending the central bank. Big Pharma central banking system is in a panic because QAnon Trump is bringing them down. And it might not happen in the first four years, but they are dealing with them now. Obama, Clinton set up the Iran deal, uranium deal through the Clinton Foundation carried out by Obama, 1.7 billion, four routes, five planes. One entire plane went missing, and Q thinks it went to corrupt politicians. Kickback. Grand juries, sealed indictments, starting within certain departments. A lot of people have been screaming because no one has been investigated yet. Before people can be prosecuted, the DOJ, FBI must be cleaned up. Pompeo was placed there to do recon first and then switch over to, to into the position as Secretary of State once all the information was attained. Once Gina Hesbell is confirmed, she will really clear out the corruption. Difficult position of Trump pulling out of Iran deal. It messed up German gas auto companies. They went heavily into debt. Who visited the White House recently? Major Pickle. These corrupt EU leaders find themselves in. Anyone that chooses to stay in the deal gets slapped with sanctions. That includes UK. France, and Germany. Slow walking by Dems. They are obstructing because they know they are building their own gallows. Watch what happens in 30 days. No arrest until justice system is cleared out. POTUS is working on federal and state judges. 11-11, Veterans Day. It's a marker given by Q. Is there a red wave coming before elections? Awan hearings being postponed strategically. Slow walking will help create the red wave. 50 Democrats who hired the Awans, who hired the Awans, will have to resign. Oops, lost election. So sorry. End game to make 
Trump's job of pushing judicial nominees much easier with more in the House Senate. <coughs> Excuse me. What are John Kerry and Nancy Pelosi afraid of? Both met with Assad. Just a moment. <coughs> Both met with Hassan. Uma Abedin's connections <coughs> to Muslim Brotherhood. Her job is to make sure Hillary stayed on task while Saudis funded Clintons for political favors. <coughs> <clears throat> Uma was put in place to make sure Saudis got what they paid for. Michelle Bachman called Keith Ellison out because he was aware of all of this. Kusami definition, they are a lo a logarithms, lock ciphers, um, i.e. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitter, Hint, regulations coming against censorship. Rudy Giuliani letter. How many of you have heard about the letter that Rudy Giuliani wrote back in 2016, where he verified the pedophile ring in the United States, which is the largest in the world? The UK has the second largest, and now Trump is exposing and cracking down on all of it and exposing all the perpetrators. But Rudy's letter confirms its existence. Very disgusting. Okay, Missy, back to you. Okay, well, let me see here. I just wanted to really, really, um, I think I've got us unmuted here. Are you, can you hear me? Missy, yeah. back to you. Okay, I'm with you. Um, so I just really, really, I'm going to mute you back, Don, so I can keep going, okay? But I wanted to really, really um, encourage people today, and we had such a hard time with Warfare Friday night. I mean, and we're still getting hit with it right now, believe it or not, but it's just not as bad, and we've contained it. The Lord's contained it, actually, so that we could actually have the show and redo it because it was such a flop on Friday. And so we wanted to make sure that we got the word out to you guys and making sure that um, you knew what God is saying for this week. And so we wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. I wanted to remind everybody before you click off, um, we are having a summit. It's a Deep Inner Healing Summit. It's through Stacy Brookman. It'll be coming up, I think, in July. And I'll be posting some information on that. It's going to be paid, but it's going to have over 30 deliverance speakers on there. And I'm not kidding. It's so worth the investment. And she, and if you get it through me, I think she's giving 50% off. So it's going to be about a hundred bucks to take it. And it's usually about like 197 for 30 speakers over a period of a week. And you can listen at your own pace or what have you, but it's so well worth the investment. Invest in yourself. Okay. Invest in yourself. It will take you places. And every time you get an opportunity to invest in yourself or to even listen to different conferences, say like, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, they have a five-day conference, uh, the Believer's Voice of Victory Convention. It's free, free healing, free deliverance. If you invest in yourself, you can skip up to 10 levels sometimes in the spirit over a period of a week. I am not kidding. Dr. Mark Sharona has deliverance healing conferences. Check those out. They have them, and you need to get um, and find out the schedule for the different conferences they have. I know that, um, gosh, Chuck Pierce has conferences that are all free. They're all free. So God is giving us the tools that we need in this hour to get free. And that is the key to getting into your promised land blessings, people. OK, that's the key to moving fast by the spirit and and accelerating things to where you can get where you want to go. OK, staying stuck is not an option. Um, if you haven't checked out my book, uh, Memoirs of an ADHD Mind, it talks about fragmentation, healing of the heart and the mind and how I'm how to get over trauma when the enemies come at you so hard, you don't even know where to start. 
to put your life back together again. You can buy it at Barnes and Noble bookstores. You can buy it at missyhood.com. Uh, you'll have to pay for shipping, but I'll sign a copy for you. Or you can buy it through Morgan James Publishing or even through Amazon.com. Guys, we're going to check off now. Know that we love you, and then we'll look forward to talking to you again next Friday night. All right? You guys have a blessed week, and thanks for tuning in. See you then.